Um, as always, um, at the first of the month, I usually do um, a blog. I go back to my roots and I try to raise awareness um, with regard to a disability or a disorder or a mental health uh, condition, just so people have information. You're getting informed, therefore, you know, you, you have the information and, and you can then have an opinion on it, a, a better opinion on it. Um, it also helps reduce uh, stigma. So that's the hope of these 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 particular types of blocks. So I'm going to talk about conduct disorder this morning. And I'm just going to, um, you know, uh, preference this by saying, please do not think, because I'm going to talk about children and misbehaving, um, that it's your child. OK, so please don't start there and think, yeah, my child must have that. It, it doesn't don't self-diagnose. Please do not do that. Um, you know, all kids push boundaries. That's their job. They're growing. And as they get older, they're going to push the boundaries, they're going to push the rules to see what's normal and what isn't normal. So please be aware of that. Um, so, you know, conduct disorder needs to be diagnosed by a group of professionals. They need a psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist to do it, but it'll also need your GP, your main child's doctor to rule out other physical causes that, um, you know, may be uh, the cause of what's going on with your child. So we need to rule out a lot of things before we actually go, yes, this is conduct disorder. So in saying that, you know, be aware, this is just some information um, to, to, to raise awareness. So let's get let's get talking about it. Conduct disorder um, refers to a group of repetitive and persistent um, and that's important, behavior and emotional problems for a child. The pattern has to be consistent. It's not that they misbehave or they do, you know, do a little bit here and there. This is consistent um, and they will look for that. There are specific criteria um, for this condition that the, the uh, clinicians will look for when they go to di diagnose this. They use the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual number five usually. And there is a set of conditions there. So what kind of symptoms would they be looking for? They'd be looking for one aggressive behavior, types of behavior towards people and animals. And they'll be also looking to see, is there any remorse there? Usually there is no remorse. The child or the teen will have no remorse for these angry or aggressive outbursts. Um, so you're talking about like uh, the likes of bullying, threats, um, acts of violence. The second set of conditions they're looking for is, you know, is there deliberate um, acts of destruction against somebody's property? Um, so vandalism, um, arson. Third lot is, um, you know, is there lying there, stealing? Um, you know, are they, is there theft, shoplifting, um, deceitfulness of any kind, breaking and entering? Um, the fourth lot is, you know, staying out after curfew. The parents have set a curfew. They'll continually break rules like that and um, running away from home um, missing school, deliberately not going to school or attending school um, anywhere that they violate the rules that we would consider of the home set by the parents or the school or society in general. So they'd be looking for those kind of issues. Um, and as I said, this has to be a repeated pattern of behavior and it has to be consistent um, of, of these patterns of behavior and emotional problems. So other emotional problems or difficulties and other conditions you might see, because there will be usually there's co-conditions as well. Um, so temper tantrums, but, you know, toddlers and even teens throw temper tantrums. So it's not let's not just pick one thing is what I'm trying to stress this morning. There's a lot of things. Irritability. Again, you'll get that with kids anyway. So, you know, we have to be careful how we diagnose this. Low self-esteem, misuse of drugs and alcohol. Um, and then we could see something like a mood disorder, anxiety, depression, PTSD. Um, learning difficulties can also occur here, um, which you could understand um, given that the child is missing so much school and that, and then there could be an underlying learning uh, disability as well. Um, problems with attention and impulse control problems. 
Um, there are some subtypes, but I'm going to leave those. If you want to read that, that's in the blog and it's at www.deborahburnpsychologyservices.com. You can go and have a look. There's a lot more detail always, as always, in the blogs. Why does this happen? You know, the causes. Well, as always, you know, we don't know. We don't know why it happens. Um, it is a higher incidence um, and it's quite significantly higher in boys than girls. Um, but we do think it's related to a number of factors. So genetic, um, environmental, psychological factors and, so, you know, social factors. So it's a combination of multiple things, multiple factors that can cause this. And as I said, you know, diagnosis is usually done by a psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist. Now, these would be child psychologists, child um, child clinical, they will deal spe specifically, sorry, don't tired, specifically with children and adults, uh, sorry, specific teens, definitely don't tired this morning. Um, you know, but the first thing they're going to want you to do is go and see your GP, your child's doctor, because they'll want, you know, a whole spectrum of blood test results done. They'll want a whole um, spectrum of things done to eliminate. They want to eliminate as much as possible before they come to the diagnosis. Now, they themselves, when they go to do the diagnosis, are going to want a family history. They're going to do observations, interviews, they're going to talk to the school. If there's any other services um, that the child has linked in with already, they'll want to talk to them. So be prepared for that. You know, that it's going to be quite extensive before they come back. As always, that's what they do before they come back with a diagnosis. Treatment is complex in, in that they're, they're going to probably need to treat a number of things at once. Um, and the earlier it starts, it is, as always with any treatment, the quicker you get in. So I always say to parent people, don't wait, particularly with teens. If you suspect something, teens or children never wait with them. Um, but, you know, treatment is going, they're going to be not just treating the conduct disorder, they're going to be treating other conditions that are possibly present. Um, so, you know, talk they're going to use talking therapies um, and supports to help the child but also the family um as parents you'd also need therapy if you were a parent of a child with conduct disorder you you're going to need therapy um as with any you know disability or disorder or mental health issue the parents need therapy and support just as much as the child does and as does siblings in the family um so examples would be they do cbt for behavioral issues anger management um they're going to do family therapy they're going to link in with other services and the school and the doctor to do a combination of supports and that's what they should be doing um so of course treatment then can if you you know we get in as early as quickly as possible we're going to reduce the risks um, and that's what you're trying to do, you're trying to lessen the symptoms and reduce the risks of developing further things, further conditions like antisocial personality disorder, mood disorders or addictions. That's what we want to try and do here in this case. So there are huge impacts, as you can imagine, for the child. Um, and you are talking about a child here. Um, for this disorder and the family so a number of areas where you we would see issues would be education so early school leaving expulsion from school learning difficulties not supported um another area would be legal legal problems so illegal issues because usually a child like this will have frequent run-ins with the law so you're going to have, um, you know, a criminal record from a, a young enough age. Um, the third one would be relationships. Just the child will have difficulty maintaining relationships with family and friends are probably going to be non-existent. So struggling to have relationships with people is, is one thing that the child is actually going to have. In all of this and, and, and everything I've talked about this morning, it's it's really important to remember, you know, we are dealing with children here. This disorder, conduct disorder, relates to children and teens. We have to remember that, um, you know, they need, they still need a loving, nurturing and supportive environment and consistency. Consistency across the board is going to be very key in the treatment here. Um, so my 
my suggestion, if you happen to be a parent who's had a child recently diagnosed with this condition is, is to reach out for help yourself. Please do that. You know, you're going to need that support. Um, so as always, um, thank you all for listening. That's it. Good morning, Claire. Hi for tuning in. Um, thank you very much um, to everybody who tunes in. And Deirdre, as always, is here, as always, um, every week. Um, if you want more, there's a lot more information, as I said, in the blog. Please do check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below. Have a good weekend. Have a safe week. And um, thank you all for listening. And thank you to everybody who listens here on Facebook and listens in replay and this and watches in replay in YouTube. And I will talk to you all again next Saturday morning. Um, I'll be doing another one on parenting uh, next week, but something slightly different. So I'll see you then.